Sturt made the long trip out to the wide spaces of Elizabeth Oval looking to consolidate third spot. Central continues with its policy of working to develop players capable of playing senior football for the club. The Dogs could have gone into the half-time break in the lead had it not been for four posters, but a miss is a miss. Sturt were well served by their Rovers. Co-captain Jack Penfold ran hard and his fierce attack on the ball was rewarded with 29 possessions. Elijah Rupsik racked up 27 possessions in bag two goals while centreman Josh Archer was in the thick of the action collecting 25 possessions and also slotting home two goals. Leading and marking well was Brad Hartman but it was his kicking that let him down. He finished the match with three goals and six behinds. One goal five of those coming in the third quarter. Showing how it should be done was Jake Atkinson who kicked three without a miss before shifting to the ruck and collecting 21 hitouts. For the Dogs, on-baller Jackson Baldwin in just his third game collected a healthy 29 possessions and his Nuri Utka teammate Alex Bryce worked hard up front. One Northern player reaping rewards for all his hard work from South Gawler is a defender, Bradley Bain. Bradley hasn't missed a single training session since November and he's emerged as the Dogs' most consistent player. It's just a shame his team is second to bottom. An Indigenous player blessed with loads of natural ability is Brandon Rigney. Mentored by Central Premiership player and former North Melbourne player Eddie Sandsbury, Brandon is loving his chance to excel. He popped through two goals in this match to make Eddie proud. The Dogs should have done better in this match, but in the second half it was unforced skill errors that cost them the game. The Double Blues comfortable winners by a margin of 36 points. Glenelg ventured to Prospect Oval to face North Adelaide, well aware that their spot in the five was up for grabs. The Roosters are known for their attacking brand of football and in the first half, even though they had more inside 50s than the Bays, their overuse of handball resulted in too many turnovers. Glenelg capitalised and as a result, the Tigers were up by 17 points at the long break. In the second half, the Roosters pushed the go button, kicking 11 goals to Glenelg's two. The Tigers seemed to lack endeavour and when they had control of the ball they didn't use it very well. North coach Heath Uni was pleased with the even spread of stats. His players are sharing the workload. Uni's also proud of the seven country lads in the side, some commuting twice a week to train and play. One of them is Riley Hayes who once again was the Roosters leading possession gatherer with 30 touches. Another country lad, 16-year-old ruckman Brady Zwa, is showing great promise. At 196 centimetres, it's no wonder he won 21 hitouts. Excelling at tennis and basketball right now, getting his hand on the footy is the main focus. And also getting his hands on the footy was another big man, Lockie Medhurst. From Glencoe in the southeast, Lockie got his hand to 31 hitouts and did a lot of hard work shepherding and spoiling in what turned out to be a solid team performance. For the Roosters, Jack Greger and Patrick Bowles returned from the reserves and Matthew Daniwa, in just his second game, continued to improve with 19 possessions and five clearances. Matthew did his pre-season training with the seniors, but unfortunately injury put pay to any illusions of grandeur for now. For the Bays, Scott Spriggs from North Ballarat notched up 30 possessions and five clearances on the wing and Jordan Galpin, an inside midfielder, celebrated his return from injury laying on 10 tackles. The goals for the Tigers came from one of the locals, Mitch Howie from Brighton. The gene pool out at Prospect looks pretty good with names like Coffey, Jarman, Trenorden, Viney and Wanke, all sons of former SANFL stars and all making their own way towards the big league. The Roosters home over the Tigers by 35 points. The Eagles ventured into enemy territory to play West Adelaide under lights at the Richmond Oval. These teams compete for the Jake Watson Shield that honours the memory of four West Adelaide junior players whose lives were tragically cut short. With fourth up against first, this was very much the match of the round and the first half was a real arm wrestle. Nathan Brown was in and at it, laying some hard tackles and collecting 31 possessions along the way. Tim Sumner soared like an eagle and took a great grab and even though the Bloods got a lot of the footy poor disposal allowed the Eagles to stay within reach, West went into the long break with a 20 point lead. The Eagles worked hard to get a breakthrough, but the West back line held firm. Kieran Nelson generated plenty of drive off half-back and the former Goodwood Saints player Lucas Theodoulou provided rebound from centre half-back. Matthew Appleton from Muntu was the standout on the stat sheet. 
His strong work rate was rewarded with a massive 47 possessions. And speaking of standouts, Tom Schwartz, the son of 1993 Premiership captain Peter Schwartz, also had a big game, chalking up 36 possessions to honour the family name. For the Bloods, Ryan Dykesman continued to do what Ryan Dykesman does best, gather possessions. This week it was 35, believe it or not, slightly down on previous weeks. And providing a target up front with two goals was Tom Schott. Tom is on Brenton Phillips' state list, but he didn't travel to Belrive last week. Lucky for West because his two goals made all the difference. The youngsters were on show at the Richmond Oval. West had five under-16 state players in the side. The boy from the Mallee, Sam Durden, made his debut showing the big boys that he can take a good mark and kick a good goal. Also making his debut in round 10 was 17-year-old Matt Hawkins from Henley Sharks. He got the Eagles close with three goals. The Eagles pushed hard until the very end with Tim Sumner finishing the game in style with the last kick of the game. Three bounces followed by a great goal from the 50 metre line ensured that the Eagles outscored West in the second half. But the siren came a few minutes too early and the Bloods held on to win by 11 points and regained the Jake Watson shield. Second place Norwood hosted bottom side South Adelaide at home under lights. This was a mismatch of monumental proportions. And if the Red Legs had kicked straight, they would have had this game sewn up by quarter time. The goals that were scored, and there were plenty of them, were spread evenly. Even fullback Blake Hellyer got into the action. Under 16 state player Peter Bampton wore the GPS tracker last Saturday night. He collected an amazing 40 possessions, chalked up 14 clearances and bagged four goals. For his age, he's got outstanding strength and speed with the tracker clocking up over 16 kilometres during the match. Also running hard was Dan Williamson. Dan played half of last season in the reserves and this season he's been shining brightly in the under-18s. The round one MVP might have missed selection in the under-18 state squad this year, but coach David Odie was very pleased with his 30 possessions and three goals. For Norwood, the talent was hard to miss. Chase Bauer took some great grabs, Steve Baldasso was good around the stoppages and Nick Dinham used all of his 197 centimetres to advantage, plucking 11 marks and kicking four goals. For South, well, there were a few good moments in the second quarter, but it was a sorry tale in the second half. The Redlegs piled on 12 goals to nil. Under-16 state player Caleb Daniel followed up last week's best on ground performance with 23 disposals and five clearances, but Max Duncan, an overage player in his first season with the club, was the only other South player to rack up more than 20 possessions. South coach Kim Cobb's team may have lost consecutive games by over 100 points to the top two sides, but in fairness, half of the under-18s are already playing league and reserves footy. With six under-16s in the side, it's little wonder they lost a game. That margin, 113 points.